I was willing to ride for you Willing to slide for you Willing to cry, willing to die We are back at Plus with another great episode, and today I have the pleasure of bringing you another great artist. And if you want somebody to be on Plus, make sure to tag them below. But today I have someone who is brand new, R&B artist, and her name is Marbelli. I pronounced it right, right? Yeah. Yes, I pronounced it right. So now um, I have the floor. This beautiful young lady with me, and um, let's first talk about who are you? Talk to me about you. Okay, my name is Marbelli Valdez. 22 years old, I go to school, work, I just started dropping music, but I've been singing for a while. Okay, so why why now? Out of Because I, I, I saw your Twitter, and you've been singing and doing covers for a while, but why now? Why did you drop these two great songs right now? Just because I wanted to see, like, what's up, like, to see what would happen. I wanted to try it. Before, I never wanted to, because I was like, mm, it'll be whack, or like, it'll be hard. But I was like, let me just give it a shot. And that's it. So right now you're kind of at the stage where you're just kind of trying to see where your music could go. Mm -hmm. Basically, or like if people would like listen and do that. Okay, so let's first talk. Mm, should we talk about the music now? No, let's not. Let's go on to your Twitter timeline, right? So we have this little section where I go on your Twitter timeline. I take a few of your tweets and, you know, we just talk about what you tweeted and what it means and where you're at at this point in life and are you still the same. Most of the tweets are really recent. They're not old tweets like I usually do, mm -hmm. right? So let's go with the first one. First one. Keep all my feelings to myself. Do you consider yourself to be a person who doesn't share much of how they feel? Um, for the most part, yes, I don't. Because I don't like people judging or I don't want to feel like I'm weak for that. Okay. And then that's exactly why I stopped the why I stopped myself from making music because I didn't want people to assume like my feelings through what I'm thinking, basically. Okay. So were you trying to say that you know, your feelings don't necessarily correlate with the music that you're writing? I mean, kind of, but not at this moment, basically. So at some point or some stage you were there. Yeah. And now you're longer there. Okay, dope. Next tweet. Here we go. My best friends, my best friends are real, right? So I bring this tweet up, and I bring this tweet up because as I was going through your timeline, I kept on seeing a lot of the same girls over and over and over, yeah. over and over and over. So, and I don't tend to see that in a lot of, like, other people, right? So mm -hmm. I took this tweet, and I want to ask you, like, you know, who are your best friends, and, and, you know, why are they so, I guess, so big or so important to you? Because, you know, I think having a good foundation with friendships um, it's really important as a person and especially someone who's going to become an artist. Yeah. I mean, I have a group of friends. Um, they're called LCDC. I don't know. LC. Oh, okay. So I... Uh, I <laughs> well, we're called. All right. So, okay. So what does LCDC mean? Las Chicas del Clan. Las Chicas... Woo! Llegaron ellas. All right. So, you know, why Las Chicas del Clan and, you know, you know how, wait, first of all, first of all, who's part of... Uh, LCDC, like there's six of us all together. Okay, six girls. All right, cool. And how do you how do you girls meet? How did everything come up? Like most of us known each other since we were little. Like I know my best friend Jeremiah since we were five years old. Okay. And then Flaca, same age. And then most of them we like met, you know, later on. But we've been close for years. So. Dope, dope, dope. All right, so mm -hmm. let's move on to your next tweet. And I this is the this is this is the one that I really want to get into, oh right? I've had um I've had the I've had the roughest childhood um of all people could know. Um but I still turned out sort of okay. Um mm -hmm. how was your childhood? What do you mean by that? Um well mostly me, like being alone. Like, okay. So that's where I'm saying and then my parents kind of being strict with me. So I always felt like I wasn't included in certain things that I couldn't do certain things. Like when um in school I couldn't do like the sleepover stuff, the slumber parties. Because my mom was, like, really religious. I mm -hmm. had to sneak out the house, all that stuff. Oh, so you're, so you're a little bad girl, in other words. I was a rebel, <laughs> but trying. So now, but, but, but you know, I think, I think the, the important part of this part is that you say, you know, I sort of turned out okay, mm -hmm. you know? Um, why, do you, why, do, why do you say that? How do you come into that? Like, I turned out okay. Like, I didn't lose my cool, like, I'm grounded, I guess. You know, work. I think I'm on my shit, basically. Perfect. You know, I, 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 you know I, think, I think it's big when people kind of, like, 
um, dive into the child because I feel like we all have like different um, I guess perspectives mm-hmm. even though sometimes we go through the same thing yeah. um, and I feel like my mom was on the strict level too and I feel like on the same thing like I missed out on some of these oh you know sleepover moments these kind of things where everybody was going to was kind of like you weren't invited to go so that was dope alright next one I literally remember every single time someone told me something bad about myself to bring me down and lower my self esteem years later I can still hear it in my head why are you bringing these tweets out? <laughs> like, oh my god. Because um, I used to like feel like I was fat before. Like in high school, I was like so obsessed with like losing weight, being skinny. Because I used to model when I was younger. Okay. And then, I was, and then like I wanted to continue on, but I, I didn't think I had the same like figure or whatever. Okay. So like I remember people saying like, oh, you're getting weight. And then I would just think about it like all the time. Okay. Now my, my question to you, do you think you've gotten to a point where you've gr- outgrown that or do you still think you still have yeah. those those thoughts in the back of your head i mean i used to like last year i was working out like a lot on a diet and then i stopped caring a little like i let myself go i gained weight but now i feel like like i'm not i don't feel the same way like i don't think i'm like so obsessive with being skinny i just want to do it in a more healthier way perfect perfect i think and i think that's i think that's the the most important part you know i want to do it in a more healthier way and I think that's really where, you know, um, I think especially artists when they're going in through these stages, like mm-hmm. a lot of people can relate to these type of moments in our lives. Yeah. Um, all right. So now let's go to the music. You dropped these two um, singles. Um, and let's talk about Unbothered, right? And I want to talk about Unbothered because of the father, right? I feel like a lot of girls walk around saying, oh, I am Unbothered. This, 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 and that. Mm-hmm. I don't care about no niggas. These niggas ain't shit, blah, blah, blah. I'm doing me, and yada, yada, yada. But I think, like, maybe, like, deep down inside, every girl still has that one little, maybe, moment, or one little guy who little but surely does unbother you. Mm-hmm. Is that true to you? Or do you somewhere feel like everybody, every girl has that unbothered moment? Um, To me, I think, like, First of all, I'm cold-hearted. Like, if I say I'm not going to talk to somebody, like, that's it. But... So you straight chop niggas out. Yeah, like, I don't get chances. Like, one thing, I'm like, that's it. You done. Like, I won't talk to you, block you, that's it. But, um... Shit, she gonna block niggas. That's why, I mean, there's a point, like, if you have, like, history with somebody, like, of course, it could be, like, hard to be that way towards them. So I said, like, in the song, like, I used to feel this way, like, but now I'm unbothered, basically. Okay. Um, uh, who produced the beat? How'd you, um, how, you know, how was the developing of the lyrics? How did, did you have to place yourself in a certain situation to get to creating the song? Tell me more about, more of the creation of the song. So, um, it was like one day, because sometimes I fall asleep late, I get home from work late, so I'm just up on my phone. I was on YouTube looking through beats, because I was like, let me actually try to see if I could make a song. And then I was looking at beats, whatever, I found something that you know i liked so i tried to make a song to it when i got the song i didn't want to use like a beat that was already made so i sent the beat to someone his name is 5am he okay. produces like really good so i told him to remake the beat but like to change it up a little like make it more like a different style to match the words okay so he made the different beat like for me okay that's dope mm-hmm. all right now my uh i like um uh in a good way not a bad way Mm-hmm. Right? So, tell me more about that song and what's the main message behind it? Because the song, like, since I say overwhelmed, like, okay. I put an emphasis on that word. Um, I think, like, when people think of overwhelming, like, they think stressful stuff. Like, so I said, like, in a good way, not a bad way. So, when you're overwhelmed, like, you would think it's bad. But I said, like, overwhelmed by love. So, it's, like, basically, like, lately I've been feeling, like, full of love, like, life, you know. Okay. Great. Um, and these two songs, where can I find them? Apple, SoundCloud, Spotify. Okay, so all digital platforms. Basically. Perfect. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, let's talk about the music industry, right? Um, R&B specifically. Mm-hmm. With what artists do you think you relate yourself more with? Mm, I mean, I don't think I could relate myself to one specific artist. Maybe with, like, specific songs. Like, okay. that different artists like. have. Like, Janae Eichel. Um, she has, like, this album. I think it's called, like, Trip. 
Okay. Some songs I like, like that's I, I think I kind of like was going for like the same type of vibe. Okay. Or like Summer Walker now. Okay. Let's see. I like rap music, so. Oh, you like rap music? Okay, boom. This is this is just kind of interesting. All right, cool. Mm-hmm. So you like rap music? So I'm gonna give you. I've, I just did this on um, my last interview. So I'm gonna give it to you, and I'm gonna ask you to put this in an order from best to worst. Okay. Right. Here are your options: Biggie Smalls, Tupac, mm-hmm. JC, Kendrick Lamar, J Cole. One through five. Who's the best? Mm. I'll sip on it. Right. All right. Let me say. Tupac, I think. Tupac, interesting. Okay, who's number two? Mm, it's hard. I yeah, that's the. I usually tend to ask hard questions. I don't. Biggie Smalls. <laughs> Biggie Smalls, number three. And J Cole. J Cole. Okay, I'm starting to like you now. All right, uh, and give me four and five. You said Kendrick. You got Kendrick, and then you have Jay Z. I think they're a tie. Tie. Jay Z and Kendrick. But I think more t- uh, Jay Z. Okay, Jay Z, Kendrick. Interesting order. Interesting order. I don't order. know. Tired. All right. Now, um, where do you wanna where do you wanna get to as an artist? Like, what's what would it be your goal? You know, if you know if every if if, if you can align everything, you know, mm-hmm. where would that where would that line go to, or where would the destination be? Um, I mean, I don't. I try not to think about that kind of Why stuff. Why not? Because I feel like I don't want to expect and then not get to where I want to go. So you scared of failing? Not scared, but... Yeah, I guess. Um, Isn't, there's nothing wrong with failing. I'll tell you this much right now. There's nothing wrong with failing. Mm-hmm. Actually, I, I actually enjoy failing sometimes. This is why I never try to make music. Like, I waited long to try. Because I, I didn't think, like, I would even make something good. Like, that could be sounded or whatever. So, now, you know, now that... Let's, let's get into this. Because actually, this is... I actually like this. So, you know, I think first I'm going to ask you is, did you, do you think you would have gotten the feedback that you've gotten on all of these songs? Because I've read some of the comments on, on SoundCloud mm-hmm. and pretty positive compared to some other shit that I've seen. Mm. Yeah, I didn't expect it. Like, or oh. I didn't expect as many people to comment, maybe. Okay, cool. And do you think the quality of music that you're producing is better than what you thought it was? Yeah. I so think now so. my question to you is, why would you be scared of failing? Cause I don't want to like hear the people talking about me like, oh she trying. And and but you know what you, <laughs> what I'm trying to get is that you know is that you you're gonna bump you're gonna bump <laughs> into these people who are going listen to me bro. You, I get destroyed on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. Like I get people getting at me like, oh I'm the most uh, what's the word that they use. Uh, Un vocabulario inapropriado, right? That's that's mm-hmm. that's what that's usually what I get we get thrown at my way, right? I use I don't use the proper vocabulary, um, for the platform that I'm at, but reality is, they're not in the platform. I'm in the platform. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm I'm the one that has taken the decision to be there. I'm the one that's taken the decision to do what I do. So you know, anytime I hear somebody who kind of has that kind of fear, like damn, I want to do it, but I don't want to like. And I understand you because, I, you know, sometimes we don't want to fail because other people are kind of relying on us and expecting us to, like, succeed. Yeah. And I understand the pressure. But reality is, you know what it is? Yo, I think I'd rather fail and know that I tried and not live not knowing what could have happened. You see what I'm getting at? Yeah. So I would definitely push you to, you know, be like, you know what? Fuck everybody. This is the fuck who I am. Mm-hmm. This is what I fucking write. You either like it or you don't. And if you don't like it, leave a comment. And if you like it, leave a comment as well. Mm-hmm. Oh, don't forget to share, comment, and subscribe. Like, because the, at the end of the day, like, it's your happiness that counts. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? doesn't matter how you look. It doesn't matter what you write. doesn't matter how it sounds. As long as you're happy producing what you're producing, I think that's what really counts. And I would definitely, you know, suggest you to kind of push that on yourself. And this is not a you know, day to night transformation that's going to happen. You know, this is a mm-hmm. process. And, um, and it's, and it's tough sometimes because, yo, listen to me. A lot of people are like, oh, yo, yo, you made it, yo, yo, you're on the radio, blah, 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 blah. But yo, listen, I have, I have these demons too. I have these demons in the back of my head saying like, yo, negro, is this shit really for you? Are you really going to make it? You know what I mean? But it's a consistent battle of waking up every day and being like, nah, today I got it. You know, so I would definitely push you to do that. Um, but with that being said, um, 
what next? You know, what next are you dropping? What's what's the next song? I well, think you said you have an EP coming, something yeah. like that. Talk to me about it. So that. I'm working on it because I got two songs already. Um, well, I didn't record them, but mm-hmm. I already wrote them. I got a beat. They're being made. And then I'm just writing two more. But I wanted to drop these two singles right away so I could get feedback and see, like, which one people like more. So I could know, like, how to, like, approach the next songs that I'm going to make. Okay, cool. Is there a date for this? Mm. Or you're just kind of, like, in the process of creating it? Yeah, I don't have a date yet. Maybe like two months. Two months. All right. Well, I don't be I'll tell you. Right, I'll tell you this one. I like the in the in a good way, not a bad way. That yeah, I think that one is like a thousand times. A thousand, like, yeah, I like that better. But everybody else says unbothered is better. Probably because it's girls listening to this, right? Yeah. I right, guess listen to me. I'm definitely in a good way and a bad way. Listen, guys, we're gonna put the, we're gonna place the link somewhere in the bio so you can go click them. You let us know in the comments whether you like unbothered or in a good way, not a bad way. I'm a good way, not a bad way mm-hmm. type of guy. It's my type of music. Um, yeah. The unbothered. I'm, just, I, I'm listening to unbothered, and all I picture was girls like, like yelling at me and shit. I was like, not my type of music. Yeah. All right, but I, th- I mean, I, you know, what, listen. I I definitely applaud you for taking the step to um to actually putting your music out there because it takes a lot of courage to do it. You know what I mean? Because I feel like there's a lot of people out there who can sing as beautiful as you do. Um, and never have the courage to kind of go behind the mic, record mm-hmm. it, produce it, and put it out there. And I think I think that's the first step to becoming great. You know what I mean? Taking that first step, and, and you've taken it. So um, I'm hoping that we could keep on working and doing more. Um, where can we find you? What's your social medias? What's your stuff? I'm mostly on Instagram. Yes, I can tell. Twitter. <laughs> Twitter. That's She's on Twitter. Much it. She's on Twitter. What's your Twitter? Barbie Girl Bells. I had to change my name and I'm like, I don't know what to put. Because uh, I was like, I don't want to put my name on it. All right, cool. Want me to give you a recommendation? Use the same one for everything. Yeah. It's it's a good marketing thing. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, you, you'll be able to get uh, Mar- Marbelli, right? Okay. I thought I was going to fuck it up again. Um, so you can say like Marbelli sounds or Marbelli music or whatever it is. Just use that same one for everything. I would yeah. definitely, that would definitely help a lot. Um, anything else you would like to say? Anything else you would like to promote? She takes a lot of she takes a lot of cute selfies and like a lot of people retweet her. Just letting you guys know if you guys want to go check her out too. Not even people are yo, bro. on Twitter. People yo, she tra- are. yo, she tra- yo, she's trying to be yo, she's trying to be like all humble and shit. Listen, I was down I went down her Twitter man. Yo, they be gasping her eyes up. So um, find her princess. What is it on Twitter right now? Barbie girl bell. Barbie girl bell. Barbie girl bell. We should check her out right now. She's gonna change that though. But make sure to check her out right yeah, now. Yes, someday. Um, anything else? Right. Well, everybody, this was plugged. Um, another great episode. I have Marbelli here with me. Make sure to check around all platforms. Unbothered and is it in a good, good way? way? In a good way is out on all digital platforms. Check it out. And um, she's about to go sign the board. And then we're gonna have some negro. I was cool with negro episodes coming up. And you know those are interesting. Mm-hmm.